everyone. Good to be back. So it's eight, uh, it's eight o'clock, it's six o'clock, <laughs> exactly. Let me just, uh, I'm gonna mute everyone. Tov. All right, so uh, Shavua Tov, everyone. Um, I'm happy that we have another Sunday that we can learn. As I mentioned on the WhatsApp, I'm dedicating this class tonight, Sefer Melachim, Le'ilui Nishmat Naomi, Naomi Friedland Wexler, Zichrona um, Livracha. I, I will say just a couple of words uh, similar to what I said uh, at the Hesped. Uh, this uh, this this uh, during uh, this this previous afternoon for all those for all those who knew her or didn't know her uh, Mishpachat Wexler um, they were in our Kihila for a brief time just a couple of years and uh, but we were very privileged to have uh, to have Nomi and still have Tzvi to be you know present and part of our Kihila. And Nomi herself had a wonderful heart. She really, really did. Um, she had a, a regal spirit. She was straightforward, um, true and appropriate. And there were no, no airways about her at all. And it was very, very refreshing, really. Anytime I would say Shabbat Shalom to her or speak to her, um, she had a... A very, she was, she was a very put together person, Mamash. And she was a lawyer and she believed in truth and justice. Uh, really a, a very special person. And it's very, very chaval, very chaval that, uh, that she is no longer with us. She, I don't know if everyone knew, but she was uh, a very uh, avid, she, she participated a lot in our shiurim, in Melachim. And I don't know if people here noticed, but in the last couple of weeks, uh, besides this past week, I tried very hard to make sure that the YouTubes were uploaded mamash the next morning, um, once even immediately after our shiu. And the reason I did that is because Tzvi called me and he said that Naomi really wants to participate, but she can't because she's in the hospital. Um, so... Uh, I immediately, if you remember, I, I sent out a WhatsApp asking everyone to daven for her. And I, and I told her that I'll try as much as I can to upload the, the YouTubes. And uh, unfortunately, you know, she was only able to see one of them. So I'm dedicating this class to her, to her memory. Uh, hopefully she can be a melitzat yosher to all of us, to her family, and to Am Yisrael. Unfortunately, as everyone knows, um, we've lost a couple of more people as well uh, the past couple of weeks, the past week and a half. Uh, it's the cycle of life. And we have to realize, I, I said this also on Shabbat, that everything is planned by Kadosh Baruch Hu, to the last detail. Um, every moment of breath that we take is a gift from a Kadosh Baruch Hu, And we have to um, seize every moment we can to do good in the world to be good, to help those who are in need. And if there's anything we can learn from the past, Parashiyot HaShavua, Parashat Vayeshev, Niketz, Vayigash, Vayichi, is, is just to live our life as best as we can without looking right or left at what others have or do not have. You know, jealousy, kin eyes, 
it, it ruins our lives. And unfortunately, it ruined the lives of Yosef and the brothers and Yaakov Avinu. And, um, and we know that it ruins you know, people's lives and their mishpachot. So if there's anything we can learn from these parashot is just to live our life to its maximum, be happy, um, and, and hopefully I wish everyone health as well. Now that the corona is coming back a little bit and the schools are shutting down, may we not, uh, may, may we not uh, you know, need any more um, uh, vaccines. Uh, but who's to say? We just have to go with the flow. So I really wish upon everyone just to, to, to be the best it can be and to enjoy life, to be happy and do good in this world. And this connects us to Sefer Melachim. As I mentioned last week, um, very true to the entire book. I didn't summarize Sefer Melachim, but I, I tried as much as I can to summarize a little bit Yoshiao's uh, reign as a leader. And, and I mentioned that it doesn't matter if a leader is amazing, brilliant, creative, or charismatic, um, because he needs the people that he's leading to be with him. And if these people are unwilling to change or stand up and, and follow this leader and be with him and fight for what's right, then he's not going to succeed. And we saw that that's what, uh, that's, that, that was basically Yoshiao's uh, mistake. Yoshiao thought that he had everyone uh, following him. He thought that everyone, you know, Chazar B'Tshuva, after he found Sefer Torah, whether it was Sefer Dvarim or the entire Torah, doesn't really matter. And he thought that if because he found it, he thought because he improved, because he was a Choser B'Tshuva, then everyone obviously will be behind him. But it wasn't like that. And we saw that HaKadosh Baruch Hu already knew that that was going to happen. He told Chizkiyah as well, that because um, of uh, the Chata'im, of all the kings beforehand, and because of the Chet that we will see, that we saw with Menashe as well, Yehuda was doomed. Um, but we see that the kings, other than Yoshiau, they don't really, they don't try to change the situation. They just, they go with the flow. And that's, that's what bothers me about Sefer Melachim, is that even when these kings are told by Nevi'im what's going to happen, and they're told, you know, Elisha Navi and, and other Nevi'im said, look, if you just choose the, the, the righteous path, things will be good for you. They don't, they don't choose the righteous path. And the people, the people themselves, continue, continue to worship other gods. And, um, and that's really the, the curse of, of, of Sefer Melachim. It's the people. The people just don't rise up when they should. They have all the power. If they rise up and they follow and they do good, then the kings will inevitably also do good. That's how it works. But it didn't work that way. And we saw that's what happened with Yoshiawa Melech, who was a great tzaddik a great Choser B'Tshuva, a great human being, a decent human being, who tried to really change all the way through Yehuda and Israel, but he failed miserably, not on a personal level, but as a leader, because he wasn't able to change the people. And the message is that if you can't change the people, then there's something wrong with your leadership, or you're just not the right person for the leader, or sometimes, and I think this is really the message, that it's not about the leader. It's not about the king. It's not about the melech. It's about the people. And our perek that we're going to start now, perek kaf dalid, pasuk alef, I can't believe we only have a couple more pasukim left to the end of Sefer Melachim, um, starts out really by just telling us how things are and, 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 and we know what to expect. Historically, as we know, Yehoyakim, who is the son of Yoshiau, was appointed by Paro Necho. He was appointed by the Egyptian king. Why was he appointed by the Egyptian king? Because Egypt, Mitzrayim, took over the region of Israel. And as you recall, those who were with me last week, as you recall, basically, there's this, this, uh, um, this region called Israel that is constantly going from one side to the, to the other, from uh, Ashur and Mitzrayim, and now we have Babel in the mix. And Babel are becoming very, very strong. But Egypt, who paired up with Ashur, thought that they can defeat the Babylonians. Uh, we know that they're wrong because we know that Churban Bet HaMikdash happened because of Nebuchadnezzar, Melech Bavel, the Babylonian. But um, the Egyptians thought that they can take over. And, 
um, and they tried and they are about to fail. But in the meantime, Egypt still controls the region of Eretz Israel. And because of that, they appoint a king that he wants to appoint and they appoint Yoshi, uh, Yehoiakim to be king. So let's start, we'll jump right in. Um, Pasuk Aleph, Ve'yamav, in the days of Yehoiakim, Ala Nebuchadnezzar Melech Bavel, Vahilo Yehoiakim Eved, Shaloshanim, Vayashuv, Vayimrod Bo. So while Yehoiakim was the king, Nebuchadnezzar Melech Bavel invades Yehuda, and for three years Yehoiakim now is forced to submit to his rule, which means now he's not under Egypt, he's under Bavel. Now let's try to go into the mindset of a king who thinks, who thinks he's a king, who thinks he has people. He really doesn't because he's under Egypt and then also he's under Bavel. And he's saying it to himself, which is better? To be under Mitzrayim, Egypt, or to be under Bavel? And for some odd reason, Yoyakim thought it's best to be under Mitzrayim than to be under Bavel. So in the beginning, he rebelled. Bavel takes over and tries to uh, and tries to uh, and, and tries to create a mini Babylonian area, and our beloved Yehoiakim submits to doing the evil deeds of other worships. And he vayasara b'nei Hashem, as we saw, as we saw in Pasuk Lamed Zayin, the end of Perak Kaf Gimel. So what's happening now? Let's just go a little bit into the history. So. It doesn't really matter. We're not going to, what I'm about to say now is not from the text of, um, of Sefer Melachim, because Baal Sefer Melachim, by the way, does anybody know who wrote? I don't know if we ever addressed who wrote Sefer Melachim. Does anybody know? So it's not the kings themselves, it's Yirmiyah Hanavi. According to the Gemara, Yirmiyah Hanavi is the one who wrote Sefer Melachim. And we know this, first of all, he was the last real Navi. Um, um, who uh, who survived and basically saw the destruction of Chulban Beit Hamikdash, which will be in a couple of prokim from now, and he wrote it. And he doesn't spend too much time on Yehoiakim, and we'll see he doesn't spend time on Yehoiakim or on Tzidkiyahu because they're not important, because it's been already planned out by Hashem that Yerushalayim will be destroyed. So it's not really important. But I do want to fill you in a little bit about what's going on. So <clears throat> after three years, we're talking about 605 BCE, right? So we're talking about a little over 2,500 years ago. Um, Paro Necho uh, was defeated by Nebuchadnezzar Melech Bavel, as we saw from the Psukim. And this, this Nebuchadnezzar Melech Bavel thought that he can come in and take over the whole region. And then he tried to, to go all the way down south and attack Egypt and the country, not just the army of the Egyptians, but the country itself. And I'll show you a map in a minute. And while he did this, he didn't succeed, unfortunately, in conquering Egypt itself. And because of that, our king, Yehoiakim, thought, ah, if Bavel is not succeeding in conquering Mitzrayim, maybe I should pair up again with Egypt and fight Bavel. There was no religiosity to, to this at all. It was just about territory. It's about a king wanting to have a people, wanting to have territory. But unfortunately, he didn't succeed. Yoyakim didn't succeed. And apparently, Yoyakim probably died in one of the battles trying to fight Bavel together with Egypt. That's the, 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 the bigger picture of what we're seeing here. Um, I want to share, just I'll show you I'll share a, a map just so you can see, just so we, we can see with our eyes what's going on, so you can see the actual. Um... By the way, I, I went to Yirmiyahu, you can see in your map here as well. Um, there's a Pasuk in Yirmiyahu, which basically we, we put together and, and we see that Yirmiyahu says that there was a fast day. It was a, a Yom Tzom, on the fifth year of Yoyakim. מלך יהודה בחודש התשיעי קראו צום לפני אדוני כל העם בירושלים וכל העם הבאים מערי יהודה בירושלים because the Bavlim, the Babylonians were trying to come down and break, break through the Chomot of Yerushalayim and there was a Tzom 
There are a lot of tzomot that Am Yisrael did to save themselves. But let me show you what's going on here in the, in the region. You can see the Babylonian Empire. I just took this map uh, from, from the internet, from Matach, as Misad HaChinuch. And, and basically, what you see here is the Bavlim, basically, as, as they all did, they came to conquer, and he tried to conquer Egypt over here. And that's where he probably didn't succeed. And because he didn't succeed in conquering the Egypt, the actual country, Egypt, um, uh, the Yehoiakim, the Judean king, thought that he can probably go ahead and pair up with Egypt and defeat Bavel. He didn't succeed, and that's where he probably fell and died. But the but as we're going to see, Yirmiyahu Navi, who writes, who writes, uh, who writes this whole uh, uh, passage, doesn't really talk about what's going on because it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter at all. So let's let's just read the text and see what's going on now, at least here from from the point of view of Yirmiyahu Navi. So what does Hashem do? Pasuk bet vayishlach Adonai bo et gdudei chasdim et gdudei aram ואת גדודי מואב, ואת גדודי בני עמון, וישלכם ביהודה להעבידו, כדבר אדוני אשר דיבר ביד עבדיו הנביאים. So what's happening? Hashem sends arm bands, kasdim, by the way, are basically bavlim. The Judeans used to call bavlim kasdim. That's what they used to call them. So when... The text says, Gdudei Kasdim, it's basically talking about the Bavlim, the Babylonians, and Syrians and Moavites, I guess, Bavel controlled the whole area, as you saw on the map, and instead of them sending their own soldiers, they forced other soldiers, the, um, the Assyrians, the Moavim, uh, Ammonites, to, to, to fight against Yehoiakim, who, assuming, a, a paired up with Egypt in order to fight Bavel. This is after Bavel um, was not successful in conquering Mitzrayim. And this is exactly what God had already had said um, way back uh, in, in, a, in a different time, right? If we go back, for instance, um, to other passages when Yeshayahu Hanavi, I'm not going to bring up the text, it's not important. He basically said, this is what's going to happen. The Nivuah was set forward, and therefore it doesn't really matter. So the Navi here, Yemiyah Navi is basically telling us, that Hashem did this. This is all planned by Kadosh Baruch Hu. What happens? Pasuk Gimel. Ach, al pi Adonai, hayta bi Yehuda lehasir me'al panav, bechatot menashe kechol asher asa. Why did this happen on the command of Hashem? Because that is what was decreed way back because of the sins of menashe. Now, Always everyone asks, and we discussed this before also, what about tshuva, right? We're taught that Yom Kippur comes, we can all achzor be tshuva, if we really repent. There's no mention here, and in a way it takes away the idea of tshuva. If, if, if the Navi keeps on saying, because of what your ancestor did, Menashe, then in a way, why are we all living? Why don't we just give up now? Let's give up because it's, we're doomed anyway, we'll give up and we're just going to lie down and do nothing because there's nothing else we can do. Right? Uh, but the human condition doesn't allow us to do that. We fight. You know, we have the virus corona, we fight. We could have just said, okay, uh, you know, let everybody get infected, the strong will survive, the weak will die out, and those who are strong will survive and they'll create a new world. But that's not how we work. We work hard to to fix things, right? And, and, and we fight for, at least in Israel, to vaccinate everyone. And now we're vaccinating younglings as well. And we see what's going on in the world. There's, there's this craziness, because that's the human condition. But what we don't see, what we lack to see in all of these passages that talk about, because of Menashe, your ancestor, we don't see the people rising up. That's what connects to what we said last week. It seems that the people gave up. They're not interested in changing. They don't want change. It's a problem. It really, really is a problem. It's a problem because there's something about us. As we grow older, um, we, we have a hard time changing anything. We have a hard time changing ourselves, changing our surroundings. And I understand why. Because we built our lives based on hard work and we want to enjoy 
the proceeds of the, we want to enjoy what we what we created for ourselves and to say someone else is going to come in and, and enjoy it. But when it comes to tshuva, we don't hear the people rising up. We actually don't hear any tshuva happening other than Yoshiyahu HaMelech. So when the Yirmiyahu says, because of Menashe, he's not blaming Menashe. He's saying Menashe, what he did, he created a culture, a culture that still exists. The culture of Abu Dazara, the culture of taking from the weak, the culture of um, um, not giving to the poor. We saw what happened. There was a whole long list of what Yoshiao tried to eradicate, what Yoshiao tried to do. We spent two prakim on that, helping the poor, correcting injustices. But the second he corrected it, then he left, it came back again because people didn't really want to change. That is the machala. You know, in, 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 in the parsha, we're starting parashat Shmot. And once Hashem takes us out of Mitzrayim, you would th- one would think, right, Parashat Bo and Beshalach, we would think now that we were slaves, we understand what it means to be enslaved, and now we, we appreciate freedom, and we appreciate God for bringing us out of Egypt and freeing us from slavery. But immediately there's this, this, this name that, that stuck to Am Yisrael, and that is Am Kshe'orif. Am Kshe'orif means an Am that doesn't want to change. Am Kshe'orif. It's a machala, it's a sickness. And we see that exists also here. Because what Menashe, Yehovah Menavat started as well. Menashe created a culture, a culture where, where we're just going to, even though we know that all we need to do is fix things and things will be better. But that's what's happening. So Yirmiyahu Nabi doesn't go into detail of what's going on because it doesn't matter. People are not changing. And Pasuk Dalit comes in to tell us exactly what's really happening in Yerushalayim, a little bit. Vegam dam hanaki asher shafach vaimale et Yerushalayim dam naki velo ava adonai lisloach. This is a very difficult Pasuk, and especially because innocent people had to be killed. That's what bothers me most, because there's always going to be innocent people that suffer because of those who are not innocent. And, 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 but that's Hashem's, that, that's something that we, we, we as human beings, we can't understand, right? On Shabbat, I discussed tzaddik veralo, rasha vetovlo, right? It's something that we can't tap in. Why is it that there's sometimes righteous people, good people that suffer, and those who are wicked survive and they succeed? And there's, there's no real answer that, that can suffice, no real answer that we can listen to. It's, ah, now I understand, right? Because if we understand, and this is what Rabbi Sachs said so beautifully and so eloquently, he said, if we understand why, why Rasha Vetovlo and why Tzadik Veralo, why is it that good people suffer sometimes? If we understood why it happens, then we're not going to fight for them. We're not going to fight for good because we'll understand. Because when you understand something, then there's no reason to fight because you understand. When you don't understand, you fight for justice. But unfortunately, what's what, the pasuk that we read here, innocent people were dying, not because of them, because of the wicked. The wicked bring us all down. They do. The wicked bring us down. And at the end of the day, good people suffer. Mamash, good people suffer. That's the reason for inserting this pasuk here, so that we realize that not everyone was bad. There were some good people, dam naki, as it's mentioned here. They were. But when they don't stand up, or when they have no koach to to bring up and rise up and, and create a good vibe, or rather those who are wicked are controlling everything, and they have no chance, and then they're going to just Die amongst all those that are, are wicked as well. It's, it's, it's a terrible thing. Hashem put it forward that we don't understand. And that's why even more important is the achdut of Am Yisrael to, to be linked together, leto, for good. And, and when there are wicked people amongst us, our job is to fight, fight for justice, fight for righteousness, fight for what's good. But unfortunately, there were not enough good people around, and they also died as well. It's not fair. But as I mentioned also, 
one of my drashot. That's life. Life is not fair. Life is mamash not fair, and and we have to realize that everything is meta kadosh baruch At the end, at the end, it's emunat mima. That everything is mehashem, and even when we die, we know that there's another world, a better world for us. This is just one world. Maybe this connects to the ilui neshama of Nomi Friedlander that hoping that and Wexer who's, who's in a better place, who's in a better place now. But right now we're on the verge of Chulban Beit HaMikdash. It doesn't get better, it's only going to get worse. And a Chulban is a real thing. A Chulban Beit HaMikdash, God does not decide to destroy his only home in the world, stop because people are just not being okay. Stop because people are not behaving, misbehaving. No, there's something a lot more going on here. It's wickedness. It's it's not caring about the weak. It's not helping the poor. It's taking for themselves. It's controlling. It's it's a situation where Hashem says, I don't want to live in this world. I can't live in Yehuda anymore. I can't live in Yerushalayim. I can't live in Beit HaMikdash. People are not being Jewish, quote unquote. They're not being what a Judaism preaches for them to be. So I don't want to live here. I want to destroy it. It's not that Hashem says, because you misbehaved, I'm going to destroy the Beit HaMikdash. He's saying, I can't live amongst you anymore. This is not Kedusha. But unfortunately, make no mistake, there are a lot of good people in the world, but those good people will suffer if they don't try to stand up and make a difference so that those who are wicked perish. It's our job. This world is an Avodah world. It's an Avodah where we have to work hard. We can't just live our life, put our feet up and say, but I'm a good person. I'm doing what's right. I'm honest. I care about people. It's not going to work if there are wicked people in our midst. And that's, I think, what this Pasuk is teaching us. The Pasuk is teaching us the helech ruach, the vibe, the, 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 the atmosphere of Mamlechet Yehuda. They were good people, but they were doing nothing to change it. Yoshiao tried. He tried to make a difference, and he thought he did, but he didn't succeed. To, to sweep all of those wicked people and change them. He didn't succeed because it has to come from the people. They have to want it. How do they want it? By seeing their neighbors, by seeing their neighbors not, not say hello unless they change. So it's a very, very terrible, it's a, it's a sad time in, in Perek Kafdalid, where Dam Naki Hashem Lo Yislach Hashem is not going to forgive those who are good and decent because everyone is in the same pot. Achdut said, Rav Kook always says that the klal is stronger than the prat. And that's what we, I think, have forgotten. You know, during the Six Day War, we were all together. We were. There was a, a sense of achdut. Now, I'm not going to go into all the political problems, but there was a sense of achdut. And that's why we succeeded beyond our imagination. We went all the way through Beirut, all the way up down to Damascus, because we were together. Our koach is uh, being together, united as one, is, 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 is unmeasurable. But when we decide to, 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 to disconnect from one another, not care about each other, and let, let those who are wicked be wicked, and that wicked is, oh, I'm going to be myself. It doesn't work. Hashem is saying it doesn't work. I don't want to live amongst people that don't stand up for, for what's right. So that's it. That's all we have to say about Yoyakim. Pasuk Hay says, okay, therefore he didn't do anything positive. He didn't change anything. The people didn't change anything. Everything else that he did is recorded. Where? Does it really matter what he did? It matters not. His son, Yoshiao's grandson, becomes king. It's the end of Mitzrayim's reign. The king of Egypt and his army never marched out of Egypt again because the king of Babel now controlled the territory. And he took everything from the Euphrates River all the way up, Nachal Prat. All the way down to the northern borders of Egypt, and now Bavel is controlling the entire region. Who is Bavel? Who is Nebuchadnezzar? What do they want from us? Are they going to live and let live? Are they going to let us let us work? Are we going to try to rebel against Bavel? 
what happens now that we have a new region, we have somebody new around us. So we'll continue. Pasukhet, Yehoyachim. Who is Yehoyachim? First of all, he was 18 when he becomes king. Ben Shmone Esre Shana Yehoyachim Bimalcho. How long did he rule for? We've heard of Yehoyachim only for three months. Ushlosha Chodashim Malach Birushalayim. Veshem Imone Hushta Bat El Natan Birushalayim. Vayas Hara Bene Adunai Kehol Asher Asa Avi. It's, inf- it's, it's infectious. Evil is infectious. What does it mean to be evil? We always read about vayas hara b'nei Hashem. What does it mean to do ra b'nei Hashem? Vayas hara means to be actively ra, to be actively wicked. Doesn't mean you just don't, you don't be mikadesh at the Shabbat. Doesn't mean you just don't do mitzvot. It's not sheve al To be wicked is to actively do things that are not good in this world. People actually did those things. Our kings did bad. They did bad things. They weren't just, you know, not shomrei Torah mitzvot. Lehavdil alfei alfei havdalot. Today, in our country, we have many types of religion. We have we have streams of, of religious people, whether it's Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox, conservative, reform, reconstructionism, and everybody and everything else, right? We have secular Jews. Chas v'chalila. Secular Jews are not bad people. Conservative Jews are not bad people. Reform Jews are not Orthodox. No one's bad, unless they actively do something bad, right? These kings did bad. They were fighting for their kavod, fighting for their shlita, fighting for money. We'll see very soon that something that always, always I found peculiar is every other king has to give up the gold and the silver that is in the Beit HaMikdash, right? We'll see very soon that Melech Bavel also takes all of the treasures from Beit HaMikdash. We saw that with, with all the other kings. Aram, we saw it with Ashur, we saw it with uh, Bavel, we're going to see that with Bavel. And I'm asking you something very interesting. If the Assyrian king already took all the treasures, how does now Yehoyachin have all this treasure that we're going to see in, in Beit HaMikdash? Where does it come from? Where does he get it all from? Just has a tree, halva, he has a tree that grows gold? <laughs> Where does he get all this money from? How does he have so much? So much so that we're going to see the Melch Bevel takes all the Otsarot. They were already taken by the other kings. Uh, and we're not talking about many, many years. We're talking about, what, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years? You know, how does he have... So I'm going to leave that open for a minute as we go through the Prakim. And just think about that for a minute. And it connects to the Yas Hara Be'ene Hashem. Okay? So let's see. So he was eight, 18 years old. And he does he does uh, uh, evil deeds if uh, Nehashem, um, uh, right? Um, and what happens? Ba'etahi pasuk yud, ba'etahi alu avdei nebuchad netzar melech bavel Yerushalayim v'tavo ha'ir b'matzor. This is the first of many sieges, right? We have a king who comes and sends uh, uh, sends people to go ahead and, and officers. Uh, and, and 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 they wanna uh, they wanna take over Yerushalayim. You know, it's a very powerful city. It's got very big, high, tall walls, and it's a fort. And he sends people to 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 do a matzor. And he wants the Judeans, Yehuda, to surrender to Bavel. What happens? Pasuk Yudbet Vayetze Yehoyachin Melech Yehuda Al Melech Bavel Who he surrenders. He doesn't want war. As a, as a human being, he's trying to do good for his own people. He doesn't want war. He remembers what happens when you stand up. Uh, unlike with Hizkiah, if you remember, Hizkiah had a ness happen to him because he was a good king. The ness 
uh, against Sancheriv. If you remember, with the we talked about the Akhbarim with the Magifa, the virus, right, that went through his camp and killed 100,000 people. But Yoyachi knows that he doesn't deserve any of that. So he wants to give himself up. He gives himself up, himself, his mother, his Sarim, his Sarisim, and he basically... Um, surrendered and saved Am Yisrael, saved Yehuda. He really did. So from that point of view, he did, he did good to his people. What happens? So he's taken um, and uh, he's taken to Bavel. And then Pasuk Yud Gimel, which I mentioned before, what does Melech Bavel do? What does Melech Bavel do? Where is all this gold coming from? So some of it, I understand, comes from the time of Shlomo Melech. It could be that every single time, every single time a king comes in to take the Otsarot, the kings at that time, they, they want to hold on to whatever they can. So they take some of the gold and they put it, they hide it, they put it in, in different warehouses in Machsanim because they want to hold on to their gold. So I can understand why there's still a little bit left from Shlomo HaMelech. But Otzot Beit HaMelech, where does it get, where does it come from? So the only thing I can think of, and I'm going to show you soon uh, two psukim, one from Yeshayahu, from, from Sefer Yeshayahu, and from, one from Sefer Melachim. But the only thing that comes to mind is these king continuously take from the poor. They continuously take, they raise the taxes and they take gold and silver from the poor constantly because they want to be rich. And where do they put it? It's not like they use it to buy, you know, a good, to, to raise the economy. They take that, they take all that gold and they just stash it in their palaces so they can say that they're rich. I want to bring an analogy. And we all know the analogy. Arafat, Hamas, they've been given a lot, a lot of money throughout the last 50, 60 years. A lot. And I don't know if people know this, but you can investigate. Arafat died a very, 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 very wealthy human being, a billionaire or a millionaire, I don't know. Instead of taking all that money and building schools, in, in Gaza and building infrastructure. Instead of Hamas using the money that they received to do good, Arafat takes the money, puts it in his own personal baking out in the Cayman Islands. Mamash, it's like it's like Mission Impossible. You know, it's like all those movies where they, they have money and they hide hidden away. And that's what's happening here. These kings are taking everything and they're not building, they're not creating, they're not giving to the poor. So I can understand if we if we tap into a little bit of what's going on historically, why is it that Yoshiao Melech didn't wasn't able to bring the people with him? Because there's a disconnect between the Melech aristocracy and the people. They weren't ever together. And this goes way, way, way back to the time of Shmuel, Shmuel Hanavi. If you recall, one of the things Shmuel said to the people against against having a king, he said, he's going to take your money. He says that time and time again. He's going to take your daughters, he's going to take your, 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 your sons, but also your money away. And that's what we see here. Time and time again. I want to share my screen just to show you a pasuk from Melachim and a pasuk from Nevuat Yishayahu. Um, where is it? Okay, so in Melachim Bet, if you recall, not too far away. Um, you, you see it, right? I don't see it on my screen for some reason. You see it? Yeah. Melachim Bet, Perek, Kaf, Pasuk Tetzayin. It says, Vayomer Yishayahu el Chizkiyahu, Shema Adavar Adonai. If you recall, Chizkiyahu was given a nevuah. Hinei amin baim, venisa kol asher beveitecha. It's Kilu God was already giving the Nevuah. But what does it mean? If you remember, one of the sins, I, I saw it as, as a 
as a flaw in Chizkiah Melech, if you recall, I mentioned it, I thought it's a flaw, is when the previous Babylonian king came to visit Chizkiah, who in, during Belshazzar, during that time they were together, what did Chizkiah show Melech Baven? Do you recall? What did he show him? He didn't show him the Avodat Bet HaMikdash. He didn't show him the beauty of Avodat Hashem. He showed him the Otsarot. So no wonder if you're going to show and, and flaunt your, your money that you have as a king that you're not using for the people, then it's meaningless. And that's the first thing that the Babylonians are going to do when they want to take away your riches and, and your, um, your, 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 your koach, your, your might. And in the Navi Shaya, who also was during the time of Chizkiah, says, Hinei amin ba'im, reading down here, Venisa kol asher beveitecha, v'asher atzur avotecha, le'yum hazeh bavei, lo yivater davar me'ashem. What I'm trying to show is that why do these kings have so much? Because they're not using it for good. And there's a disconnect with the people. There's, there's, they're not together. The king becomes Melech Kesh Ar Umot HaOlam, not a real Jewish king. And I think that's a flaw. So what happens? Pasuk Yud Gimel is one of the first exiles of Yehuda. Pasuk Yud Daled, very sad. Vehigla et kol Yerushalayim ve'et kol asarim ve'et kol gibore hachayil aseret alafim gole v'chol echerash ve'amasger lo nishar zulat dalat am ha'aretz. Nebuchadnezzar carries away prisoners, royal princes, princes, right? He exiles 10,000 men, deported all the skilled workers, blacksmith, leaving the poorest of the poor, the people who have nothing to live for. He's really ruining Mamlechet Yehuda. What's left? Nobody. In a way, the elite the elite of the society is being exiled already now. This is the first Khulban. This is the beginning of the end. And it's just mentioned Kederich Agav. Oh, by the way, Nebuchadnezzar took all the greatest of the great. He took the princes, he took all the black, he took all the, all the, all the businessmen, he took everybody that had something to give. And he took them away because they're not giving anyway. What do I need them for? They're not giving. They're not participating in expanding and creating. So he takes them, of course, from a, from a strategic point of view, the reason why he took them was to ensure that there's no rebellion, to ensure that uh, Yehuda is weak so that he can control them better because when you have people of power, obviously they gain power and they might rebel against Baver. So in a way, strategically, he's ensuring that no one can actually defeat and rebel against them. But we do have to stand up for Yehoiachim for saving at least Dalata'am, for saving the poor, because had he tried to fight against Bavel, it would have been the end of Bavel completely. Vayegel et Yehoiachim Bavela, right? Nebuchadnezzar took Yehoiachim to Bavel as a prisoner. Ve'et em ha-melech, ve'et neshe ha-melech, ve'et sarisa, ve'et ve'et elei ha-eretz holich gola mi-Yerushalayim Bavela, emphasizing again that he took everyone, but kol anshe achayil, shivat alafim, ve'charash, ve'amasger, hakol giborim osay milchama, ve'yivayem melech bavel, gola bavela. Ve'yamlech melech bavel et matanya dodo tachtav, ve'yas evet shemo, tzid kiyahu. We're mamash nearing the end. Um, Nebuchadnezzar deports all of the important men, like we mentioned, to Bavel. And he makes, he makes Yehoiachim's uncle, Matanya. He's the son of Yoshiau. His name is Matanya, but he becomes Sitkiyau. What does Sitkiyau do? The last psukim of Perek Kafdalet. So sad. Ben 21 shana Sitkiyau b'malucho. ב-11 שנה מלך בירושלים, בשם אמו, חמוטל, בת ירמיהו מלבנה, another son of יושיהו, ויעז הרע בעיני אדוני, ככל אשר עשה יהויקים, כי 
על אף אדוני הייתה בירושלים וביהודה עד השליכו אותה מעל פניו וימרוד צדקיהו במלך בבל. So Nebuchadnezzar makes Yoachin, his uncle Matanya, to become king. Tzidkiah was 20, 21 years old when he became the king of Yehuda. He ruled over Yerushalayim for 11 years, the son of Hamutal. And what kind of a king was Tzidkiah? This is Lashon Sagi Nahor. Tzidkiah, you think the guy was a tzaddik. Last king. He has an Efsharut. He has the ability to try, to try Lihishtadel, to do something good. Instead, what does he do? He does everything he can against the Kadosh Baruch Hu, And Hashem becomes so angry with the people of Yerushalayim and Yehuda that he banishes them from his sight. Then, Vayimrod Tzitkiyahu Bemelech Bavel. My question before we, before we end and before we uh, start next week, which is the last Perek, I'm going to leave you with a, with, a, with a question. Does anybody here think, just philosophically, or, or if you have any idea, or, or if you would like to have your own narrative, do you think it was possible to change the outcome? Bemet, do you think it's possible to change the outcome? You know, we, we are told when Yom Kippur comes, we have one tefillah after the next, five tefillot, we get to Ne'ilah, and we cry out to God. And we say, Hashem hu ha'elokim. We say it seven times. Hashem hu ha'elokim, Hashem hu ha'elokim. Because we're trying to convince ourselves that Hashem is the ha'elokim, and maybe we forgot, right? And we're trying to yell out together with our, with our friends who are davening next to us. And we're yelling up, out to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We say, Shema Yisrael Hashem HaNokein Hashem Echad. But nowhere in this entire book do we have that. Nowhere in this entire book do the people rise up. And that's, that's what I keep on saying because that's the message, you know, a message to, for it to, to recite, for it to, to get across properly. You got to say it again and again and again. Propaganda, you got to say it again and again as many times as it takes. But we don't listen and we still don't listen. We're in Ankh Sheoref. Tzid Kiyahu, it's hinting, you can be a tzaddik. I think the hint is you have the ability to lachzo b'tshuva. We keep on hearing Hashem says, Hashem says, no, 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 no. But even afterwards, why is it that in Pasuk Kaf that we just read, Hashem is reminding, Yirmiyahu is reminding us, and God is mad because he's giving Tzidkiyahu the chance to lachzo b'tshuva. And he doesn't so Hashem is mad. Meaning Hashem could have destroyed Yehuda long ago, but he keeps on giving chance after chance. Now, how long, how much more can God endure? How much more does God want to live amongst people like this? How much more? It's going to deteriorate. It's going to, it's going to blow up. This is not real. And sure enough, that's what's going to happen, unfortunately, in, in the next Perek. Um, in a way, I don't want to read next Perek. In a way, I'm not interested in, uh, in reading uh, Perek Kafhe. I, I don't want to. I'm afraid to read it because uh, it's going to be sad. Uh, it's going to remind uh, uh, me again of human nature. And it reminds us what happens, you know, even in our own world, in what's going on today. You know, there's so much machloket. There's so many different, there's, there's a lot of sinah. There is, it's a, we don't learn. And it's Kehilu Hashem is saying, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you this prime minister. And I'll give you another prime minister. And I'll give you another one. You're not listening. I'm giving you a chance after a chance. I, I gave you, if you recall, Hashem even one time, if you remember, Hashem said, you know what, fine, I'll change, I'll change my strategy. I'll let you win. I'll let you defeat Aram. I'll let you go ahead. Hashem said, I'll let you defeat all of the nations around you in six days. I'm going to give it to you in a silver platter. It's a miracle. Yet we don't see it as a miracle. Well, some of us see it as a miracle, but the most, most of us don't. The, the, the majority of Am Yisrael is a non-God-fearing majority of, of Am Yisrael. And and, and, and we are like those, those, those innocent people living in Yerushalayim. We're living our lives. We go to shul. We mikadesh we, 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 at Shabbat. We try to um, have good, great families. And we raise them right. We're doing our part. 
but we're neglecting the fact that there are those who are not doing their part and we're just letting them continue to do not to do their part. Now, it's true, some of us are, are, are not strong. We're, we're not charismatic enough. We don't have a following. We can't stand up and fight. We don't have the ability. We're not, it's not part of our personality. But there are those who can and those who should, but they don't. And that's the problem, is we don't stand up against those that need to change. And Hashem is giving Tzitkiyahu another chance and then it says, Pasukaf, Ki al-af Adonai atab Yerushalayim v'udin ha-shlichota me'alpanav, which means, had it not said, Vayas hara, had Tzidkiyahu done good, Hashem might have, would have made it, maybe postponed the Churban. Another generation, maybe another generation, until, until we solve the problem. What does it take? I, I'll ask you, and I said I'm going to leave you with, 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 a, with a, an unopened question. I'll ask you, are you happy? Is everyone here happy, truly? You know, if you were if you were talking to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and Hashem asked you, "Are you happy with Eretz Yisrael? Are you happy with Medinat Yisrael? Are you happy with with what you see?" What's going to be your answer? Are you going to say, "Yeah, perfectly content, very happy. I'm very very happy about what goes on. I'm happy about our Knesset. I'm happy that when somebody wants to get up and talk, he can't because everybody's yelling at him. I'm happy about that. That doesn't bother me, right?" Are you going to say, I'm happy with the achdut? There isn't any achdut. If Hashem asked you, because Hashem asks us all the time, we get up in the morning and our neshama is given back to us. And Hashem says, I'm giving you neshama to do good. So I'm leaving it up as an open because that's what we're going to be asking when we read next perek. Are you happy with what we have? Do you pray? Do you put in your tefillot? Because that's all some of us have left. All we have left is our tefillot, because we are not the prime minister, we're not the president, we're not Sarim Bamshala, we're not Ramat Kalim, we're not. We're just people, and we're living our lives, doing our best we can, being good people, decent. Do we put in our tefillot every single day, Hashem, I want change. Hashem, I want things to get better. Please help our leaders do a better job. Do we put, do we, when, 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 unfortunately, this happens all the time, when the Chazan on, on Shabbos, says, Avinu, Avinu, and he sings it. Some of us say, oh, not that Nigun again, right? Some of us say, oh, so slow, can it be a little faster? Instead of listening to the words, that's, that's, we come to shul and it's repetitive and it's routine. We're not doing our job. All we have left is tefillah. And even that we don't do properly. So I'm going to leave it as an open question. Are you happy? Can you truly say, I'm happy with how Medinat Israel is run? If you're not happy about it, then daven for it. So, Be'ezat Hashem, we will, uh, I don't know if we'll finish next week, Sefer uh, Melachim, we might need two, two, uh, two shurim for it. Be'ezat uh, Hashem. So, Shavua Tov, everyone. Shavua Tov. Thank you, Rabot. I'm leaving to America tomorrow night um, to go to the Pigeon Haben of Mainin. So I, yeah, so I, I will not see you. Um, uh, you know, it, it's um, anyway, I, if there are recordings, please send them because the timing is going to be off. And I don't want to miss the end of this safer. So, Although you know the end, it's a, it's an unfortunate okay. end. I know, but I want to hear you. You you know you 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 say it with such heart, as if you're feeling it. It happened right now, and that's what we need to hear. It can't be relegated to history no because heart. history repeats itself, and you say it with the heart of today. So I appreciate that, and I thank you. So, and may we all have only the sorot to vote. Besarot avot, and uh, please everyone uh, keep keep warm and stay healthy. And uh, you know, unfortunately, we our masks are coming back uh, a little bit more than we would like. So bezrat Hashem, I hope uh, with our tefillot, uh, you know, we can get over this uh, this as well. So shavuot tov. Amen, amen, amen. Shavuot tov. Toda. Toda. Bye.